gas in urinary bladder. Now, gas and sonography. Historically, gas has been told as detrimental to performance of sonography. But over years, it has been shown that gas can be used to the advantage of the physician doing ultrasound. And of course, you have to go an extra mile to use a gas in sonography and uh, make a better diagnosis. Now, this is a plain x-ray of the abdomen showing the KUB area and uh, there is gas within the urinary bladder. So, the gas outlines the urinary bladder. Normally, it will be opaque, but here it is uh, filled with gas. So, when you do ultrasound in this patient, this will be the appearance. The gas will produce an echogenic line with the reverberation artifact producing a dirty shadow due to gas. So, we cannot uh, differentiate this from the uh, empty urinary bladder with uh, gas filled bubbles taking the place of urinary bladder and you get the same appearance. Of course, when there is gas within the urinary bladder also it appears same. And the third condition where the similar appearance will be seen is gas within the wall of the urinary bladder which we get in emphysematous cystitis. So, all these three conditions we will get the same picture as shown here with the gas with the dirty shadowing. So, how to differentiate? So, now uh, when there is normal uh, urine filled urinary bladder, you see the bladder filled with fluid and you are able to uh, see the uterus and the right ovary in a female patient because the fluid allows ultrasound to travel. But when there is gas in the urinary bladder, when the patient supine, the gas is in the anterior part that is the non-dependent part. So, as a result, it will produce uh, an echogenic line with um, a dirty shadow. So, now uh, this is the appearance. So, how to confirm uh, that there is um, gas within the uh, lumen of the urinary bladder and it is not uh, in the bowels or not in the wall. So, the useful technique, simple technique is just dip the probe uh, down. Just dip the probe and you will see that the gas in the anterior part of the urinary bladder will be separated into two. As a result, we will get two shadows, two echogenic lines on either side producing dirty shadow. Whereas in the center, because the gas gets displaced, the ultrasound can travel through the urinary fluid in the urinary bladder and you will be able to see the structures posterior to the bladder here there is rectum. So, here you do not see the structures posterior to the bladder because of shadowing. Because of the dipping the air gets um, separated into two giving a fluid filled um, bladder in between so that the, the structures deep to the bladder will be seen. So, this is the dipping technique which shows confirms that um, the gas is within the urinary bladder and uh, Whereas, if it is in the bubbles, uh, it will be uh, displaced and you will see an empty urinary bladder down or uh, you may have to fill up the bladder a little later to confirm that the bladder is normal. So, here this is the video showing the dipping the probe technique in a patient with gas in the urinary bladder. You see the echogenic line and uh, shadowing, but when you dip the probe, that the gas gets displayed, I mean separated into two uh, on either side with uh, uh, allowing the ultrasound to pass through and you are able to see the thick walled rectum posterior to it. So, this is the dipping the probe technique. So, whereas in uh, if the gas is in the wall of the urinary bladder, what happens when you dip the probe? Because with the uh, emphysematous cystitis, there will be gas within the wall, also some will escape into the lumen, so in the lumen also there will be uh, gas. So, when you dip the probe, if it is in the lumen, it will get displaced, but in the wall, the gas within the wall will remain the same. You see the, the wall and in the wall you see the echogenic line, so that confirms that it is not gas in the lumen, which the lumen gas gets displaced 
and uh, we see the gas in the wall of the urinary bladder. So uh, both anteriorly, posteriorly, all round in the urinary bladder, you will see the uh, gas in the wall confirming that it is emphysematous cystitis. So you can see the dipping technique. So when you dip, the gas in the lumen gets displaced, but gas in the wall remains same. You see the thick wall of the urinary bladder and in the wall, you see the cogenic line of gas within the wall. So that is emphysematous cystitis. So this is uh, before dipping. When dipping, you see the gas in, uh, in the wall of the urinary bladder. And if you use high frequency probe, you will be able to see the thickened wall of the urinary bladder. And in the thick wall, you see the gas and which remains same in spite of pressure, showing that it is well contained within the wall which happens in emphysematous cystitis, which is a complication in a patient with uh, uncontrolled diabetes mellitus. So the gas in the urinary bladder, the appearance will vary an ultrasound depending upon the amount of gas. So when the gas is significant amount, you will see it uh, in the anterior part, you will get the shadowing. But if it is moderate amount, you will see gas only in the anterior part. Rest of the bladder here you will be able to see. Here the gas is much more. So you, the entire bladder gets I mean, masked by the shadow. But here you are seeing the rest of the bladder because the quantity is only moderate. And um, you can here see a little less than this. You see the entire bladder and you see anterior part little gas. And uh, whereas here, you see most of the bladder is normal, but you see a single bubble of gas there producing the dirty shadow. So here also you see dirty shadow. Here also you see dirty shadow and a single bubble of gas with dirty shadow. So you can pick up a single bubble of gas within the urinary bladder. So once you have uh, seen this, you can confirm that this is gas by change of uh, patient position from right lateral to left lateral. So here the patient is in left lateral decubitus. So as a result, the gas in the bladder moves to the right. So when you do a transfer scan of the bladder, you see the gas with the dirty shadowing on the right side of the bladder. And when the patient turns to the right lateral decubitus, the gas moves to the left side and you will see the gas column in the left side with the dirty shadowing. And the, the, this is the video showing that uh, patient turns from left lateral decubitus to right lateral decubitus and you see the shift of the gas from um, right to left when the patient moves uh, turns from left lateral decubitus to right lateral decubitus. So this confirms that the gas is in the lumen of the urinary bladder. Similarly with a single bubble of gas you can see in left lateral decubitus it is seen in the right side and in right lateral decubitus it is on the left side and in video in real time you will see that the gas bubble shifts within the domain of the urinary. So now with all this you have confirmed that there is gas uh, within the urinary bladder and uh, this is um, the flat cycle tube sign where here you see to check uh, whether there is some um, puncture in the cycle tube you know that you place the tube within the water and you see gas escaping as bubbles so this is the flat cycle tube sign this can be seen when there is gas in the urinary bladder you see here you see the gas is escaping from one point in the posterior wall of the bladder and because of the escaping you see this sign cycle fat cycle tube sign because the gas escapes uh, in the fluid filled urinary bladder and this can happen when there is a fistula with a gas containing organ like uh, some part of the GI tract or uh, it can escape from the ureteric orifice uh, from the kidney or it can uh, escape from the wall of the urinary bladder where in emphysematous cystitis so all these three conditions can present as the flat cycle tube sign in the case of a gas in the urinary bladder. So here, uh, case of gas in the urinary bladder, you see that um, the flat cycle tube sign from the posterior wall, you see the gas and when you put on color, you see a lot of color due to color bleeding because of the marked um, difference in acoustic impedance. So that is called the explosion sign. So it clearly confirms that there is gas um, escaping from a point. So that is the cycle tube sign. So that shows that um, 
that from that point gas is escaping so you can look for the uh, sign of a fistula now what is the clinical presentation when the patient has got gas in the urinary bladder the patient may present as recurrent urinary infection because of the fistula tract or infection uh, like emphysematous cystitis or uh, patient usually say that there is frothy micturition because of the mixture of urine and uh, gas and uh, foul smelling urine when there is a uh, uh, fistula because uh, there may be uh, fecal masses escaping from the colon into the bladder in a colovesical fistula that can cause intermittent obstruction to the urethra so patient may present as intermittent obstructed stream so these are the clinical presentation now once you see uh, gas in the urinary bladder before proceeding on to look for the cause you must ask for history of instrumentation when you do you may see uh, the foley's bulb as uh, uh, proof of in instrumentation but if there had been a catheterization and catheter has been removed then you have to elicit that history from the patient which will say that uh, the gas in the urinary bladder is due to the instrumentation here you see uh, gas in the urinary bladder and uh, you see uh, in there is um, irregular thick walled uh, sigmoid colon and uh, and you see a tract extending from the uh, urinary bladder to the thick walled sigmoid colon so you suspect um, a colovesical fistula so this is due to colovesical fistula due to carcinoma of the sigmoid colon with gas in the urinary bladder so straight away you can make a diagnosis because you see the cycle tube sign you see the gas escaping from the colon into the urinary bladder and you also see not only gas you also see fecal masses escaping into the bladder so that is uh, with the ultrasound alone you are able to give a diagnosis of colovesical fistula due to carcinoma of sigmoid colon then another case of gas in the urinary bladder you see uh, gas in the urinary bladder and you see lot of uh, gas bubbles and you also see uh, fecal masses in the urinary bladder and when you see you see there is a tract extending from the urinary bladder posteriorly so you have to explore this area and when you look uh, that is the cycle tube sign and you know that there is a fistula and when you explore this area you see an irregular mass of uh, sigmoid colon so this is the carcinoma of the sigmoid which is uh, eroded into the bladder producing a colovesical fistula so with ultrasound you can give a diagnosis of carcinoma of sigmoid colon with a colovesical fistula now another patient a middle aged patient presenting with a urinary tract infection and when you look for the kidneys are normal and when you see the bladder there is gas within the urinary bladder and uh, uh, when you look for other uh, signs when you see here a, a gas filled tract extending from the urinary bladder to a slightly thick walled colon there so you suspect whether it is colovesical fistula but you are not seeing the fecal tube sign there is no escape of uh, gas bubble so you have only a doubt whether it is uh, a tract so how to confirm the confirmation you can do by another maneuver of giving a water enema and doing ultrasound so here you see the water enema when you give a water enema there is a gush of fluid from the colon into the urinary bladder through the fistula confirming that it is colovesical fistula so now we have diagnosed gas in the urinary bladder and confirmed that there is a colovesical fistula so then you look at the uh, rest of the colon here you see the sigmoid colon uh, which is uh, showing thick walls and a diverticulum there and in the transverse scan you see uh, colon which is uh, not thick wall but you see uninflamed diverticula here and here so this is um, uninflamed diverticula in the proximal colon with the colovesical fistula previous acute uh, diverticulitis with complication and fistula tract to the urinary bladder so this is colovesical fistula due to diverticulosis so how we are able to say it is due to diverticulosis because of looking by looking for uninflamed diverticula proximally in the proximal colon now here uh, you see uh, again gas in the urinary bladder 
and you see the explosion sign and um, you, you see that posteriorly uh, there is a tract from the bladder to the rectum that indicates rectovesical fistula and if you see closely you see an irregular uh, thickening of the wall of the rectum indicating that it is carcinoma of the rectum. So here there is carcinoma of rectum which has infiltrated the uh, posterior wall of the urinary bladder with a tract to the uh, bladder uh, with the escape of gas into the urinary bladder. So this is a rectovesical fistula due to carcinoma of the rectum. Now here this is a, a young boy, 6 year old boy uh, presenting with recurrent urinary tract infection for 3 years. Ever since he, um, uh, he gives history of surgery for Hasbrunck's disease 3 years back. So uh, ever since the surgery he has got recurrent urinary tract infection and a scan of the bladder shows uh, there is a single bubble of gas in the urinary bladder. You can shift the patient position to confirm that it is the uh, lumen in the lumen. The gas bubble is in the lumen and when you do look for the uh, bladder you see there is florid uh, mucosal thickening in the left side of the base of the urinary bladder. So when you look carefully for um, this area then you make out copper tract extending from that uh, mucosal thickening of urinary bladder to uh, the posteriorly placed rectum which contains gas. So this may be a fistula tract from the bladder to the rectum. So rectovesical fistula. So here we don't see a um, flat cycle tube sign. So you can give uh, the water enema again and when you give water enema you see the gush of fluid from the uh, rectum in through that uh, fistula tract into the urinary bladder confirming that it is a rectovesical fistula. So the rectovesical fistula here is due to the previous surgery for Hasbrunck's disease. Now here uh, again patient presenting with the uh, current urinary tract infection and frothy urine that is the bladder you see slight thickening of the wall and there is a single bubble of gas in the urinary bladder. Again you can confirm the shifting of the gas bubble and when you look for that um, thick walled uh, bladder in one particular area there is marked thickening of the wall of the urinary bladder with a gas filled tract extending from the lumen of the urinary bladder to what looks like a, a thick walled bowel. So then you have to see carefully for this area and when you look for that area you see that uh, there is an irregular non stratified thickening of the uh, small bowel with a dilated loop proximally. There is partial obstruction to the bowel with the non stratified thickening of the wall of the uh, small bowel which has infiltrated the bladder with the uh, enterovesical fistula that is confirmed. So this can happen most commonly in our country in a tuberculosis or rarely it can be Crohn's disease also. Now another case of uh, urinary tract infection you see the bladder and you see a single bubble of gas in the urinary bladder you can confirm by change of position and here you see the irregular thickening of the uh, wall of the urinary bladder and you look more carefully there you will see that there is a gas filled tract going extending outside the urinary bladder to uh, what looks like a slightly thick walled uh, small bowel. So that may indicate an enterovesical fistula but there was no uh, live uh, sign of a flat tire tube sign. So what you can do is during cystoscopy you see the florid uh, mucosal thickening of the urinary bladder and then probing with the urethral catheter you see that there is an opening and when contrast is injected through that opening it enters the ileum and then visualizes the cecum. So there is a fistula between the terminal ileum and the urinary bladder and uh, at laparotomy there was a fistula from the terminal ileum to the urinary bladder and there was no specific pathology on uh, uh, the resected uh, uh, bowel and it could be uh, a foreign body uh, which has uh, escaped from the ileum into the bladder which is a possibility but there is no proof. Now here again uh, a patient uh, had a urinary symptoms and a catheter has been put and 
uh, there is recurrent urinary tract infection and uh, you see uh, the bladder and the gas in the urinary bladder and there is Foley's bulb uh, uh, in the uh, bladder and you see a thick walled small bowl loop adjacent to it and the interface is ill-defined. So a closer look shows that there is actually a continuity between the lumen of the urinary bladder and the small bowel with gas there indicating it could be an entrovesical fistula and um, you see in real time uh, with the pressure of the probe you see that uh, the contents of the uh, small bowel and with gas is flowing into the uh, urinary bladder through the fistula tract confirming that it is entrovesical fistula and it is probably due to the uh, insertion of the Foley's bulb. So it's an iatrogenic cause of entrovesical fistula. Now another patient with recurrent urinary tract infection, you see gas in the urinary bladder with a dip uh, uh, technique and you also see gas in the prostate. So you do a transrectal ultrasound and you see the prostate bladder and in the prostate you see gas in the prostate with uh, uh, the reverberation artifact, dirty shadow and when you turn to longitudinal scan you see the prostate and actually the gas is in the prostatic urethra and uh, when you draw the probe to see the anal uh, uh, canal you see the gas in the urethra and that is the anal canal and there is a, a gas filled tract extending from the anal canal to the urethra. So this is a yano urethra fistula and uh, uh, that is the real time showing with pressure and release the gas um, extending along the fistula tract from the anal canal to the urethra confirming that it is yano urethral fistula and uh, that is the uh, urethrogram confirming the yano urethral fistula and uh, patient was um, put on ATT and the uh, fistula healed showing that it was probably due to uh, tuberculosis. Now this is a 35 year old woman presenting with severe dysuria of six months. This is the plain x-ray you see to calculi and you see the uh, IUCD and um, when you see uh, ultrasound uh, the gas in the urinary bladder and with dipping you see that there is uh, the column separating into two confirming that there is gas in the urinary bladder and when you go back to the x-ray you see the faintly gas filled urinary bladder. So, which was missed in the x-ray. So, the, now there is, we have confirmed that there is gas in the urinary bladder. That was a transverse scan and when you turn to the uh, longitudinal scan, you see the bladder, you see the calculi, you see gas in the urinary bladder and you see the uterus. So, you see the calculi, uterus and uh, you see what is uh, that, that is the IUCD. So, you do not see the IUCD in the uterus. So, there is missing IUCD. So there is uh, the findings are gas in the urinary bladder, vesicle calculi and a missing IUCD. So to look for the luminal gas, turn the patient from supine to de decubitus. So here it is supine, you see the two calculi and the urinary bladder and uh, when right lateral decubitus, you see that the uh, calculus 1 has fallen to the dependent part, that is the right side because it is lying free in the urinary bladder it has fallen to the dependent part whereas the calculus 2 remains there itself indicating that it is fixed. So because of this sign um, an endovaginal uh, scan was done also for to look for the missing IOCD. Endovaginal scan was done I am trying to push the uh, calculus away from the urinary bladder which uh, is uh, not happening indicating that the calculus here is fixed to the wall of the urinary bladder. But on close look, you see an echogenic um, linear uh, lesion extending from the calculus through the wall of the urinary bladder extending outside. So this is along the long axis of the IUCD. This is the vertical limb of the IUCD. It is, uh, it is actually attached to the calculus and it is going through the wall of the urinary bladder into the colon. So when you do a scan perpendicular, short axis, turn the probe 90 degrees and um, do the endovaginal scan, then you see the calculus in the urinary bladder and when you move, extend the uh, scan 
along the axis. You will see that is the calculus and then you see the vertical limb of the IUCD extending through the wall of the urinary bladder into the colon. So again we will start from that is the calculus, the vertical limb going through the wall of the urinary bladder and the horizontal limb in the colon. So that is the short axis scan and it confirms that uh, the vertical limb goes through the wall of the urinary bladder and the horizontal limb in colon. With gas in the urinary bladder, it is called a vesicle fistula. So what has happened is the IUCD has perforated through the uterus into the urinary bladder and uh, the colon with a colon vesicle fistula and there is calculus formation on the lower uh, part of the IUCD present within the urinary bladder. So that is the final diagnosis. Now here you see the endovaginal scan along the long axis of the IUCD. Here there is calculus in the urinary bladder and you see the vertical limb of the IUCD which is uh, attached to this calculus extending through the wall of the urinary bladder into the adjacent colon. So that is the long axis scan of the IUCD. So that is the vertical limb and uh, that is the colon. Suppose you do a short axis scan here. How will it look? That is the bladder and you see the calculus in the urinary bladder. And next scan when you move, you see uh, the next scan through the vertical limb of the IUCD that is the wall of the urinary bladder. It goes through the wall of the urinary bladder and next scan uh, you do a little down through the colon. You see the horizontal limb of the IUCD uh, in the colon. So this is um, the final diagnosis, gas in the urinary bladder due to colovesicle fistula because of migrated IUCD from the uterus uh, with uh, calculus from the uh, lower part of the IUCD, the vertical limb extending through the wall of the urinary bladder and the horizontal limb in the colon and the IUCD is occupying the colovesicle fistula. So that is the final diagnosis. Well, this is the diagrammatic representation of the diagnosis. The urinary bladder, there are two calculi. There is also gas in the urinary bladder due to colovesicle fistula and that is the cystoscopy showing the calculus there and that is the IUCD extending from the calculus and when you go follow that, you go in through the colovesicle fistula into the colon and you see the horizontal limb of the IUCD. So that is the colovesicle fistula which has been removed. So that is the calculus which has been broken and to bits and the IUCD in the uh, colovesicle fistula. So you can make such diagnosis by going an extra mile. Now here uh, this is a patient um, presenting with again urinary tract infection and the bladder shows this appearance. So what is it uh, due to? And uh, this is a 66 year old man, hematuria 3 years, dysuria, urinary tract infection and to look for this better you fill up the bladder little more. So you see after about an hour the bladder is well filled but still uh, that uh, lesion is there within the uh, bladder and you see the appearance looks like a prosthetic mesh. So on history then uh, uh, patient gives history of surgery for inguinal hernia some years back. So it could be migrated mesh. So then when you are looking for mesh uh, extension, you see a single bubble of gas within the urinary bladder. So that confirms that uh, uh, there is some other complication and uh, you see in video, you see the my mesh and it, it seems that it is extending through the dome of the urinary bladder outside. It is continuous with a loop of bubble. So that is the mesh and you see the uh, loop of bubble there. So that is, uh, it could be a, a mesh extending from bladder into the bowel and uh, you see the mesh extending out and it is extending into uh, the small bowel and in high frequency it confirms that it is a loop of uh, small bowel. So in real time you can see the mesh extending through the bladder into the small bowel loop and in real time you see uh, the gas bubbles going through the fistulous tract. So the final diagnosis is migrated mesh uh, due to previous hernia surgery with the vesicointestinal fistula. That was uh, confirmed by cystoscopy and the mesh was removed. 
Now here this is a patient presenting with uh, again uh, urinary uh, tract infection and you see in the bladder gas and you see the explosion sign but you also see the flat tire tube sign gas bubbles escaping from the left ureteric orifice so you look at the kidney there is gas in the uh, parenchyma and collecting system so that is uh, emphysematous pyelonephritis which is uh, the escaping gas from the kidney into the urinary bladder you see as the flat tire tube sign so this is a case of acute emphysematous pyelonephritis with gas in urinary bladder now here you see we have already seen emphysematous cystitis and with dip you will see the gas persisting in the wall of the urinary blood and even you see the gas present in the wall all along the entire wall of the urinary bladder emphysematous cystitis very typical appearance in a patient with diabetes mellitus now this is a lady presenting with recurrent urinary tract infection and of course there is gas bubble within the urinary bladder and um, she gives history of uh, uh, hysterectomy two years back and uh, this is the transrectal ultrasound why transrectal ultrasound she gave uh, something like uh, suggestion of uh, incontinence so in with this history we suspect um, uh, vesicovaginal fistula the vesicovaginal fistula will not be seen in an endovaginal scan because the probe will be within the vagina and the wall will be immersed in the initial part of the probe which is uh, which is a blind area so when you do a uh, transrectal ultrasound we have the advantage of seeing through the wall of the uh, rectum and so the vaginal walls will be seen better so here this is the transrectal ultrasound and you see the rectal wall anterior wall of the rectum and then you see the posterior wall of the vagina that is the posterior wall of the vagina and this is the lumen of the vagina and that is the anterior wall of the vagina and posterior wall of the urinary bladder together you see rectum posterior wall of the vagina the vagina lumen the anterior wall of the vagina with the posterior wall of the urinary bladder both seen together here when you trace that there is a rent in the posterior wall of the bladder and anterior wall of the vagina confirming that there is vesico vaginal fistula and you can confirm by putting on color doppler and uh, moving the probe press release you will see uh, fluid coming from the bladder into the vaginal lumen and escape so that is uh, blue and red alternatively when you press and release the probe confirming that there is vesico vaginal fistula you can see the video confirming the uh, vesico vaginal fistula so vesico vaginal fistula and picked up because of a gas bubble in the urinary blood now this is a seven year old girl presenting with recurrent urinary tract infection and dribbling of urine and this is the perineal scan abdominal scan there was a gas in the urinary bladder so a perineal scan has been done and uh, the perineal scan you see uh, the pubic symphysis the urethra and the vagina and the rectum and the vagina is filled with a little fluid and that is the collapsed urinary bladder and the uterus and um, you see a tract extending from the bladder to the uh, vagina the bladder remains um, collapsed because of the vagina vesico vaginal fistula and uh, you can see the anatomy better pubic symphysis urethra vagina bladder and uterus and you see a few air bubbles outlining the fistula tract here you see the bubble of gas in the vagina the tract and some gas bubble in the tract itself so in real time you can make out uh, the movement of the gas bubble along the tract from the vagina into the urinary bladder that is why there is gas in the urinary bladder it escapes through the vagina that is which is connected to the exterior so the gas from exterior enters the vagina and through the vesico vaginal fistula uh, there is uh, gas going into the urinary bladder and on uh, history there are some patient gives uh, some history of uh, surgery the details are not available so this is a vesico vaginal fistula so to conclude uh, gas in urinary bladder can be diagnosed with ease on ultrasound and you can confirm by shifting the patient position from lateral to lateral decubitus 
and look for if you confirm that there is gas in the urinary bladder you can look for a fistula from the wall of the urinary bladder to the gut and uh, also vesicovaginal fistula and there can be gas in the wall of the urinary bladder in emphysematous pyelonephritis of course when they, you see escape of uh, gas from the ureter you can look for emphysematous pyelonephritis uh, thank you very much for your patient listening